Second game just about set to get underway between the Evanston Wildcats and Chicago Kings. Standing with me right now is the coach of the Wildcats, Mike Hart. Not only have you been here as a player, your Evanston team that you were on in 1968 won the state championship. You've been here as an assistant coach, and now you say, man, I got here with a team of my own. Yeah, it's it's a great, uh, the greatest fun a uh, high school basketball player coach can have. Uh, this is what all the kids dream about, all the coaches dream about, and uh, it's truly a great feeling being here. Mike, do you feel you're being overlooked in this basketball game because King was so dominant this year and because they knocked off Simeon, a team that a lot of people consider to be the number one team in the state? Well, I, I hope they're overlooking us. Uh, you know, we're not a bad basketball team and uh, we're going to play uh, to the best of our ability and and uh, I think if things go right, we'll be in this ball game. How do you stop the tall front line? 6'8", 6 6'6", six, 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 two All-Staters. How do you compensate? Well, we're not, we're not going to change a lot that we've done all year long but uh, we've made some adjustments and we'll see if they'll work. When you see King on film, what do you say besides, oh my God? Well, there's there's no question. They look like a Division One basketball team. Uh, but we've tried to pick out a few of their weaknesses and we'll play to those and we're naturally going to play to our strengths. What about their guard court? People around Chicago were saying that Simeon had stronger guards than King and that King's guards weren't going to be able to carry the load all the way to state. However, in, against Simeon, Reginald King had a great game and Emmett had a couple of key steals. Yeah, that, that was definitely the turning point of that game. Uh, I think the, the King guards uh, really got up for the ball game. Uh, we have an advantage over the guards. We, we have a couple 6'3 guards, so we've got a little more height. Uh, what we're going to have to do is be able to contain their quickness. What about your offense? You like to control the pace of the game. That's obviously critical in this one. How do you plan on doing that? Just getting the good shot whenever it arrives or eating up some clock before it goes up? Well, uh, if we have a good controlled fast break and a good shot, we're naturally going to take it. If we don't, though, we're going we're gonna to take and uh, run our offense until we get a good shot. Mike Hart, you are here for the first time as a coach. Enjoy yourself Great. this afternoon. Thank you very much. That's Mike Hart of Evanston, and coming up to my right is Landon Sonny Cox. He is the coach of Chicago King. Some folks in Chicago said you'd never even be here. Well, we had faith all the time. We thought that if we played well, that we had a chance. It's been a long time since one team has had two All-Staters on it. Tell me about Lavertis Robinson and Marcus Liberty. Well, Lavertis Robinson is a three-year starter, but he's been on the varsity for four years. Uh, he's six foot seven, weighs 210 pounds, has a 46 inch vertical, and he's one of the most intense players that I've ever had the privilege to coach. What about your, go ahead. Marcus Liberty is six foot eight. Uh, he shoots it, he can put it on the floor, he can break the press, he can jump, uh, he can pass, uh, he does everything. If you had a soliloquy, if you had something happen at the very beginning of this ball game, first three or four minutes, would it, is it obvious that you would like to jump out in front and control the tempo because you know Evanston wants to slow it down and keep those big guys off the board? Of course, we'd always like to be ahead. Sonny Cox, we thank you very much for standing by, and good luck today as Chicago King takes on the Evanston Wildcats. Okay, thank you. What would you think of that first game before you go? It was tough. It was tough. That's Sonny Cox. Four. We're going to go now to Frank Bassoni for another interview before King takes on the Wildcats. Frank? The crowd is really looking forward to this because Evanston comes from an uh, area that's a great basketball, of course, and they've won 23 ball games this year, and they're anxious to, uh, to have a chance to play against uh, Chicago King, who's 29-1, and, and King has a reputation, of course, of being college-looking team. You look at them on the floor and they, you say to yourself, this can't be a high school basketball team, and yet they are, and they're a good one. Evanston, on the other hand, will have a little bit of different style game than, than Martin Luther King, and the fans are just buzzing around the side of the court, and we are anxious for that one coming right up here at the Assembly Hall. We'll be back. One of your network sponsors is Andy Amabem. Broadcasting Trefland this season, the makers of Amabin want you to try this field test. If you do, you'll see how surprisingly low the cost of Amabin can be. It's simple. After you broadcast Trefland, select some acres and ban Amabin granules over the row at planting. Will it be a difference in broadleaf control if you ban Amabin granules? Well, yes. Will it be a big difference? You be the judge. Not set up to ban? See your dealer about equipment discounts offered by the makers of Amabin.
It's John Beers Ford Subaru's once a year fleet buyer sale. Once a year only, we sell every car and truck and van at a factory direct fleet buyer's price or below. Take your choice, brand new Escorts or Ranger pickups from only $59.95. Because we purchased every new car truck Ford had for this one big sale, we can sell them to you for less. There's over 300 cars and trucks priced at or below what the big fleet buyers pay. Remember, it's only once a year, and it's now at John Beer's Ford Subaru. Jim Albrecht along with Coach Bill Geist of Lyle Bennett. The first game is now history. I thought maybe Boylan had him there for a second, but I guess when they go home, it'll be missed opportunities hanging over their head, and sometimes that's what a state tournament, that's all it boils down to. Well, you know, I think this is what to expect when two real good teams get together. Uh, you know it's going to be a team that uh, maybe commits uh, less turnovers, uh, makes their free throws, uh, or maybe takes advantage of the opportunities that have been given to them. And, in, well, the first game, unfortunately for Boylan, they just didn't do that and I thought Manuel made the most of their opportunity so there is one down and three more to go today let's go back to Frank on the floor Frank one of the finalists this year at the state double-a is Peoria Manuel Dick Van Syak congratulations thank you Frank what is your reaction to the game well I'm, I'm just very uh, very happy uh, for our whole uh, ball club and the school in the city of Peoria uh, I felt we had it I thought hey we got to hang on and uh, we don't want to lose it and we were back and forth and the kids did a tremendous job. When you go up against uh, kids like 6'8", uh, 235 pounds, 6'6", 210 pounds, uh, with our size, and you can see how uh, heavy we are uh, weight-wise, too, uh, I'm just very proud of them. Tell the viewers, some of whom who haven't seen Manuel play before, how the Rams played today as opposed to they played during the regular season. What was different and what was the same? Well, I'd say it's pretty much the same. Uh, if we get an opportunity to run, we're going to run with the basketball. If we get ahead of you and uh, we want to run the clock down a little bit, we're going to go into our delay game. Uh, if you're man-to-man, -man, we're going to run our patterns. We try to be a pattern team. We're a pretty good shooting ball club. Do a pretty good job rebounding and uh, try to use our quickness. We try to put pressure on you. Uh, all over the floor, it may be man to man, it may be his own press. But basically, we, we're trying to do the same thing uh, every day that we play. Coach, uh, of course, you come from a very strong lead in the Mid State 10. What time of the season was it this year when you thought that this team had the capabilities of coming this far? Well, each, each game, you're, you're playing a little uh, under uh, uh, pressure. Uh, you know, when you're picked to, uh, to win your conference, and the people are saying, hey, this ball club uh, can get the champagne. And then you're playing the likes of Rock Island. Island, Lincoln, the teams in our Mid-State 10 Conference, uh, you know, you get over one ball game and uh, you have another one looking you in the eye and you may be playing Spalding, you may be playing Woodruff, and uh, you don't relax, uh, you're so keyed up night after night, but hey, these guys have responded uh, like veterans, uh, li like the veterans that they are, and uh, it's just been a tremendous year. Quickly, a word about your leader, uh, I thought he had a great game, Jameer Jackson. Uh, I've said this so many times, Jameer has a 25 on his ACT score. He ranks, uh, he's about 10th or 11th out of a class of 213, 14 students. He wants to major in business. I said, Jameer, you're smart. Stay out of his coaching field. <laughs> well, you better watch this next one. It's King and Evanston, and you'll have to play the winner tomorrow. Congratulations. Thanks, Frank. It's been my pleasure. Dick Van Syak, the head man at Peoria Manual, and now let's go to Jim Albrecht. We had talked about the possibility of four teams going into tomorrow's semifinals with records of 30 and one, and one is already in the barn. Yeah. Well, this uh, this game coming up, I think, is going to be a great game. Uh, Evanston. To my way of thinking, I think what Coach Hart's got to do is uh, we've got nothing to lose. Nobody expects us to win. I mean, let's come down here. Uh, let's play our game. Uh, I think what he's going to do is he's going to uh, switch defenses, maybe try to confuse King a little bit, uh, maybe press him a little bit, uh, fast break once in a while, just try to mix things up. And uh, if he can get the lead, you know, anything can happen. But if he starts out slow, then I think that's really going to favor King. Lyle Bennett Academy played Chicago King this year. You want to tell us your perspective? from the bench how you tried to shut him down <laughs> yeah well, if I would have known that we <laughs> very very funny uh, uh, no what what happened uh, when we played him at Christmas I actually we played him very well um, we tried to control the tempo of the game we tried to slow it up on them we tried to beat their press and not give them turnovers not to give them uh, the momentum to get into a running pressing type of game because we can uh, Bennett can't play that type uh, 
what hurt us was our biggest guy was 6'4", and all he did was break uh, Marcus Liberty into about the high post area and lob the ball about 15 feet in the air, and he'd go up and get it, and then he'd come down and keep the ball above his head and turn and shoot, and we had nobody that could challenge him. And then if he made it, okay, they had two points that he missed, he had Libertus Robinson underneath the basket uh, rebounding it and putting it back up. Uh, those two kids had, I believe, 48 of their 59 points against us, so they're obviously the two guys that uh, make King go. Well, there's a man named Tim Brown who plays for the Wild Kids, and he had a big night in the Super Sectional. As a matter of fact, he outscored everybody who played in the Super Sectionals by hitting 28 points. He's going to have to have a good night. There are some obvious things. When you play a team that is as talented as King, you can't go cold from the floor. You can't turn the ball over too many times. Those are all obvious gimmicks. You can't right, do it. Right, and I think you've got to have more than one guy have a good game. I mean, that, their, their whole squad has got to have a respectable game. Hopefully two or three will have real good games. The other two guys will hang in there with it, and then they'll get some uh, good help off the bench. But when you're playing somebody as good as King, you, you know, you're right. It's got to be an all-out team effort. And uh, if all they're going to do is get uh, a great game out of one player, uh, it's history for Evanston. Well, they have four people on this Evanston ball club who have picked up the slack at one time or another, four people in double figures right around 13 or 14. And, and that's to their advantage, because if you have to depend on just one Tim Brown against King, they'll clamp somebody on him, and it could be a long afternoon. Right, right. and this is what Mike uh, was saying, that uh, this is why he feels pretty confident. Let's go now to the public address announcer, Steve Adams, for the starting lineups between King and Evanston. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for the second quarterfinal round game featuring the Chicago King Jaguars and the Evanston Wild Kits. First, for the Jaguars of King High School from Chicago, entering this game with a record of 29 wins and one loss. Introducing the head coach in his fifth season, Landon Cox. And now the players, number 12, a 5'10 sophomore, Michael Miller. Number 14, a 5'10 sophomore, Carl Stanley. Number 21, a 6'5 junior, Anthony Burwell. Number 22, a 6'7 junior, Carl Anderson. Number 24, a 6'5 senior, David Weatherall. Number 25, a 5'10 senior, Gerald Morrow. Number 31, a 6'7 junior, Richard Smith. And now the starting lineup for the Jaguars of King High School. At one forward, a 6'7 senior, number 20, Lavertus Robinson. The All-Stater averaging 23 points, 13 rebounds a game. At the other forward, a 6'8 junior, number 30, Marcus Liberty. His All-State running mate averaging 26 points and 11 rebounds a game. At center, a 6'8 senior, 32, Kevin Williams. Joined the team late in the season, averaging 11 points, 9 rebounds. At one guard, a 6'2 junior, number 11, Emmett Lynch. Some key steals against Simeon to get his team here. And at the other guard, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Reggie King. 11 points, 5 assists, and 3 steals against Simeon. That's why King is here. Those are the Jaguars of King High School from Chicago. And now for the Wild Kits of Evanston Township High School. Entering this game with a record of 23 wins and 8 losses. Introducing the head coach of Evanston in his second season, Mike Hart. He's been here as a player, as an assistant and now the coach, players, now as a coach. Number 11, a 5'10 senior, James O'Brien. Number 12, a 6'1 senior, David Barksdale. 
Number 42, a 6'6 junior, Lonnie Ball. Number 43, a 6'1 senior, Sebastian Coleman. Number 45, a 6'3 freshman, Javon McGarry. Number 50, a 6'7 junior, Lennox Forrester. And number 52, a 6'1 senior, Raymond Hood. And now the starting lineup for the Wild Kits of Evanston at one forward. Number 30, a 6'5 senior, Tim Brown. He leads his team in scoring with 14 a game and grabs 13 rebounds as well. At the other forward, a 6'1 junior, 33, Sid Pointer. Not much of a score, but a good defensive player. At center, a 6'3 senior, 32, Michael Jones. He rings in 13 points a game, grabs three rebounds, holding down the center. At one guard, a 6'5 senior, number 40, Brian Brown. 10 points a game from the guard spot for him, plus five rebounds. And at the other guard, a 6'3 senior, number 44, Bobby Bost. Bost averaging 12 and a half a game, four Those rebounds. Those are the Wild Kits of Evanston High School. And now the officials, John Duncan of Bartonville and Rich Firebaugh of Peoria. It is King and Evanston coming up this next. One of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Versace. Want some kitchen cooked potato chips? Nah, no thanks, kid. But, but they're the greatest, Mr. Versace, just like your team. Hey, you're all right, kid. Thanks, coach. Kitchen cooked potato chips are kettle cooked for a hearty potato flavor the whole family will enjoy. And I wouldn't do this commercial if I didn't eat kitchen cooked potato chips. They're the greatest. Kitchen cooked potato chips and snacks, available at your grocers. These two ball clubs not far apart as far as location, both located in Cook County. King from the Central Public League in the Central Division, Evanston from the Central Suburban League South Division. To the matchups we go. It is Tim Brown against Lavertus Robertson, Porter against Liberty at the forwards, the centers, Jones and Williams, Brown and Lynch at the guards, and Boston King will go at it from the guard position as well. We are set for action. The second quarterfinal game of the day. Who will play Peoria Emanuel? We're about to find out. King controls the tip easily. King gets it over to Liberty. You'll see a lot of Liberty and Robinson this afternoon. Evanson starting out in a man-to-man. He's there at the forward position. Inside they go. This is Williams. Kevin Williams gets his first shot to fall. And a lot of pressure. And right away, King creates the turnover. Reginald King with a bounce pass up ahead to his running mate. Lynch off the glass count. Quickly, it's 4-0, and this is happening in a hurry. It's a great start for King. This is exactly what Mike Hart did not want to happen, though. Mike Jones gets it up ahead to Bost. Bost is a big man for working in the backboard. Now we've got a foul against, it looks like, Kevin Williams for King. So the first personal of the game. No, they're going to give it to Marcus Liberty. I know one thing I always worried about being down here is early foul trouble. And uh, you don't want one of your stars to get a foul with uh, 7.13 to go in the first quarter. The Wild Kids trying to work it around the perimeter, and the ball will come all the way back, and they'll just reset the offense and come back. You talk about long arm <laughs> See, King, they're sitting back in a 2-3 in a zone, and the, the, the three back men are, what, 6'8", 6'8", 6'6", or 6'7", whatever, and uh, they put out their hands, and they're just about covering the width of the court. So it's you've got to eye fake, ball fake, and, and uh, 
It'll be a little tricky, I think, to get the ball in there. Bost wants the shot, and he gets what he wants. So Bob Bost brings up the first two of the afternoon for Evanston. The Wild Kids 23 and 8 coming in. Of course, King only one defeat all year. That's a Rock Island. That in overtime. A little token man pressure by, pressure by Evanston that time. Going to work the ball around the outside. You don't see all that quickness in the half-court offense, but you will see quick first steps, and that's what King does so well. Ball batted away by Evanston and Brown. All the way down they go and score it. Not only did Bob Brown or Brian Brown knock it away, but he also went down and converted at the other end, and we've got a tie ball game at four. He really went hard to the hoop because he had some defensive pressure there. The mistake at this end of the court was caused by Williams going after the ball with one hand. We, we talked about that the first game. You've got to go strong with two hands. King is not moving real well on their man-to-man -man offense right now. Doing a bit of standing around, trying to kick free in the middle is Kevin Williams, and now King will kick it over to... State of Liberty. Lynch forcing things. Robinson gets it. Lavertis Robinson with a nice touch from 15. That was pretty good position on defense trying to draw the offensive foul. The official just wouldn't give it a call. Jones running the other way behind the back. It goes to Brown, but it won't fall, and King has the rebound. Evanston has picked up the personal. Well, that behind the back pass shows me that Evanston's playing loose. <laughs> Mike Jones, who is a 6'3 senior, the replay on the foul. Uh, Liberty had very good position there. I don't know if he really wanted it. He was just so big, he just went up strong after it. It's hard to press King because they just bring their big men up to half court and throw it right. up there with their hands. And they just lob it in and Liberty will go get it. That's that's the way they like to get the ball inbounds. Lynch trying to force things along the baseline and we'll have a foul call on Emmett Lynch. Excellent defense that time. Excellent defense. He took away the baseline. I think you'll see number 33. He gets his foot in there and taking away the uh, the baseline, and the King player just forces his way in. You can't look for elbow room with your elbow along the baseline. That with the official standing right there. Against the pressure, a good pass, but it's broken up, and all the way down goes Liberty for an easy two. That was not a bad pass. It just got away from Tim Brown, who let it go right through his hand. He did, and Marcus Liberty just used a little finger roll. I don't know if they're using a new ball or not. You know, it, when you're at the beginning of the game, you're a little nervous, and your hands are, are sweaty, and uh, there's a tendency for the ball to be a little slippery. Horner didn't want that shot. In the middle, they go to Brown. Brown will force the action, and he'll force King to have a foul on Kevin Williams. Well, that'll be his first of the afternoon. See, I think that's a good play. I think uh, it, with, the, with the size and the jumping ability that the Emerson kids have, I think they ought to get it in and they ought to go right at the King players. Maybe you can get one or two of them in foul trouble. Brian Brown, not a good free throw shooter on the campaign, only shooting 53% from the line. As a coach, you'd like, what, 70, 75? Or like 100. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> You're going to be greedy. Let's get greedy. <laughs> Well, so much for statistics. Well, you know, what happened uh, the, during the season doesn't mean anything. What happens no. when you're on this floor are sometimes two different things in the season. King leading it at 8-5, and Brown trying to reduce that by another digit. He does. 4.47 remaining here in the first quarter. And you, King holds a two-point lead. Jim, you know, it just seems to me that both teams are playing very loose. You know, they're, they're, you don't have that first-game jitters. At least it's just not very visible. I think King was born loose. <laughs> no, I tell you, and I think I think Evanston of two six fives and two six threes, and one of the two six threes is two twenty. They're not a small team by any means. Not at all, Frank. Down low, great move along the baseline by Robinson, but the ball won't fall. But he'll go to the free throw line. Did you see that spin move? Excellent fake. Excellent fake. Give him the left and go to the right. He likes to do that. I see if the, why the, the man went up in the air here. He gives, gives him a little shot fake and then right around him. He put two fakes on that. Fake left, then the head fake, then take the baseline with the right. Head fakes will get you further than you think, you know? Well, you know, and early in the game, it, you know, the adrenaline's really flowing, and I think that's when a player is going to go for those fakes. Robinson is a good free throw shooter, but not on that attempt. He makes four of every five. Got a nice touch, though. Even though that came out, you knew. And he's made quite a few this year. Chicago King. A lot of folks think they can win it. Some folks think they'll only.
really get to tomorrow's round against Peoria Emanuel, but Evanston has a lot to say about that. Robinson made one of two. It's a 9-6 lead for King as Jones brings it up. Interesting strategy by uh, Evanston having uh, Bost uh, uh, being one of the people. Uh, he's not really bringing the ball up the court. He's passing the ball up the court, but he is taller, and he can see over the bigger King players. I think it's good strategy. Bost couldn't get that one to fall, so now King could go up by five as Reginald King brings it down, kicks it off on the wing. Inside they go to their man, Robinson. You know, nice touch. How can you stop that? Oh, yeah, just a good play. And, and it's, it's a smart play by King because they should use their ability. They are. Jones running, firing. Too hard. It'll go behind the bank board. And Evanston in a position now. They're down by five. This trip down could make it seven, and suddenly they're under the gun. What do they want to do? Just control the tempo as well as possible at this point? Well, I think the uh, Colts would like better shots than last time. All the way down it goes to King, who will look for Robinson, but it's broken up nicely inside by Evanston. Nice defensive play by Boston. There's a jumper along the baseline by Pointer, and he buries it. Sid Pointer with his first two of the afternoon, and it's 11-8. You know, it's funny. Uh, I didn't think that was the greatest shot in the world either. You know, when those shots go in, it's a nice job. When they don't go in, geez, have more patience, guys. You know, you know. Those. One of those, no, 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 yes. Yeah, it, it just depends on the rhythm, and I guess maybe who's shooting it. Although he looked better shooting the ball than the, the, the last shot. Now we've got a whistle to haul play. Three seconds in the lane is the call against King. So coming the other way, we can find the Wildcats with a chance to make this a one-point affair. See, as a coach watching shooting, that's you, you kind of watch the release of the player. If he releases it well, you almost know the ball's going in. Uh, and that's what I meant by that last shot. It was just released well. They get it up to Porter. Will he stop? Yes. Will he hit it? No. But he gets his own rebound with some help from Brown. And now the ball is kicked out of bounds by King and it belongs to Evanston. There's a timeout on the floor with Chicago King holding the first quarter edge. 11-8 over Evanston, 2.54 remaining. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. A lot of people have found the John Deere riding mower slightly out of reach. But that's changed. Because now you can get a brand new John Deere riding mower with full-length steel frame and 30-inch high-performance deck for the price of someone else's mower. In fact, when you see how affordable a John Deere rider is, you'll have to sit down. Nothing runs like a deer. Lux Homes is having its biggest RV sale ever. Every used RV on the lot is going at rock bottom prices. And we're closing out many of the best names in motorhomes. Holiday Rambler, Rainbow, Midas, RVC Legend, and more. None of these models will be restocked. New and used motorhomes and travel trailers must go. Buy now while every vehicle is discounted thousands of dollars to wholesale and below. We're Central Illinois' largest Winnebago motorhome dealer. So see me, Bill Butler, the man with the cigar, and save thousands at Deluxe Homes in Peoria. The contest early by three. Jim Albrecht, Bill Geist, and Frank Pisoni along court side to bring you the action. If you just joined us, Peoria Emanuel won the first game of this contest over Rockford Boylan. So they advance to the quarterfinals, which start bright and early at 11.15 tomorrow. Are we going to be up by then? <laughs> up, yes. <laughs> Who's in charge of that? <laughs> Awake is the key, I guess. The Wild Kits the ball around the perimeter. This King defense with the long arms and the quick speed, they force that ball out so far. That's, that's why you've got to look for that quick pass in the middle if it's there. And that's why you have to, I think you have to reverse the ball, uh, work both sides of the court and, and try to make the defense move as much as you can. Boss from 15, yes. That's a good shot. You want your best player shooting from there. 11-10, King with a one-point lead in the basketball. Bost is built like a small tight end. They work it around and look inside for their man, Robinson. That's the result. Two more points for King. Once Robinson gets the ball within five feet of that hoop, you know where it's going. It was just another nice pass, and he just went up and got it, and I thought it was, could have been a three-point play because he went up so strong. He, he got hacked, I think, but uh, maybe the official didn't see it because he didn't seem to bother a shot on it. Boss trying to spin away from the defense, gets it inside to Brown, who buries 
That's Brian Brown with a jumper from the free throw line, and Evanston hanging tough. This pressure doesn't seem to bother Evanston at all. It's uh, going to be interesting to see how long the uh, uh, King keeps it on. I think the key to that is Boss, the way he's handling the basketball across that center strike. He's real cool and collected about it, not in any kind of panic. As we mentioned before, he's big enough to see the whole court. Robinson that time with a finger in his face as Mike Jones played some good defense. Emmett Lynch steals it right back, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. They say it belongs to King. Lynch with some quick hands. Looked like he might have gotten fouled. Well, those are the quick, I know one thing. Those are the quick hands I saw in the Simeon game Tuesday. He had a couple of very big steals. Simeon was leading by a point in the third quarter. Lynch stole two consecutive balls. Marcus Liberty parries one from 18. Now, see, people that I haven't seen Marcus play might think that that's not that good a shot for him being so big but he can hit that shot all the time you've got to go out and guard him and that's what makes him so effective now boss gives up the basketball underneath his lynch and he won't get it to fall but right there is robinson he can't get it back again is robinson he still can't get it and now a foul against lavernus robinson who not only came up empty twice in close but also picks up the personal uh, i would say a frustration foul He's a little upset with himself for not making the shots, and then uh, when the guy did get position, he kind of went over his back. He stayed with it real well here. Well, he made a fine athletic move just to keep away from that basketball when it was on the rim the first time as Emmett Lynch missed the layup. All the way down it goes. Bossed off the glass. Nice pass inside. Excellent pass. Mike Jones with a pretty pass inside to shake Boss free, and it's 15-14. King only up by one. Boss is really physically strong and gets his way around the basket. I like him a lot. Well, the, the pass was the play, I thought, is that he drew three defensive people to him, and then he hit the open man. Nice Robinson, pass. nice pass over to Emmett Lynch, who was wide open, waiting for the gimme. We both noticed that, John. I thought. <laughs> well, the thing is, with Robinson turning to the basket like that, the defense is going to go right at him. Here's a shaky pass, but picked up nicely by Jones, who takes it all the way down, kicks it off the pointer, fires, yeah. As long as they can hit that shot, that, that press is going to be ineffective. 17-16, and now we've got a whistle, and... He stepped over the line, Jim. King stepped over the line, bringing the ball in. I was blocked out by a couple of bodies, but now Evanston could take their first lead of the contest. Got eight seconds to go. We got an out-of-bounds play here. Mike Jones will kick it in. They're all stacked at the free throw line. They want Boss to do something out there, and he better hurry. Five seconds, four I don't think seconds. I know about the time. In the middle, it goes to Brown. Too hard, and that's the end of the first quarter. Brian Brown couldn't get it down, but we've got a good one at the Assembly Hall, just as the first contest of the afternoon was. Our score, Chicago King leading Evanston 17-16, and one of your network sponsors is ME4 Romanov. Choosing a herbicide used to be a problem. Some products injured crops and some drifted, and others acted slowly, problem after problem, in spite of so-called improvements. Now there's one herbicide for corn and sorghum that lets you rest easy with your choice. A concentrated herbicide that works better because it's built better. ME4 Romanol. It controls over 60 tough broadleaves, won't vaporize and won't carry over, and it works in days, not weeks. ME4 Romanol. The better choice for corn and sorghum. There's nothing down there. No, cast off. Ooh, RCA, Fisher, JVC, Salesman, <laughs> Mr. Snark. Brand names? That's our guarantee at Renner Center. Yeah, but are they really? You bet, brand new guarantee. And will I be able to Money get... back if you're not satisfied. And is, is that... Yes, that's guaranteed. Mm, Zenith, Pioneer, GE, Shark. Dive, dive, dive! <laughs> Renner Center. We're not happy until you are. We are back live at the Assembly Hall with King leading Evanston by one. What do you think about that full court press that doesn't appear to be working for Chicago King? No, well, I don't think they're uh, playing with the intensity that I saw uh, last Tuesday, and I think that's a, a factor. And, and then Evanston has got, you know, this was stated before, I think the big guards, they got big people who could see over the, the press and hit the open man, and I think they've seen a press or two this year, so it's not bothering them. Evanston has the opportunity here to come into the Assembly Hall, so that could be a, a sense of, of pressure. They could, they're facing Martin King team where that could be another sense of real pressure on them. They don't appear to be bothered by either thing. No, they're very loose. They're very loose. And I think, uh, well, that's uh, Coach Hart before the game when they were being announced. He was very loose himself. And I think uh, the coach has a lot to do with preparing his team for that. Porter gets it inside to Brown and forces one. What a shot by 
Sid Pointer. Woo! Sid Pointer not only threw the ball off, but followed the flight of it when Brown shot it, and he jammed it back down, and Evanston leads by one. Sid Pointer. The Showtime. other team is supposed to do that, not Evanston. 6-1 going on 6-9. Ah, for the vertical leap, and now a foul out front on Mike Jones. I was about to say, you were talking about... Mike, we were talking about Mike Jones being loose. There's a the first quarter statistics right now. Evanston shooting 7 of 12, King 8 of 12. So both teams shooting very well from the field. 67% for King, 58 for Evanston. Free throw wise, 2 of 2 for the Wild Kids, 1 of 2 for the Jaguars. And rebounding is in favor of King, 5 3. Turnovers were just uh, went against Evanston. Uh, maybe they'd be up a few points if it wasn't for all that. So King trailing right now. They looked at their money, man, but Robinson has the ball batted away from him and out of bounds, so they'll restart underneath their own basket. See, Evanston's jumping ability is helping them a lot because they're, they're lobbing the ball, and if that lob isn't exactly right, they've got the ability to get up and get a hand on it. Inbound goes to Robinson. Turnaround is too short. Oh, nice rebound underneath by Kevin Williams, who got it back in. You know, Williams did not even play the last three quarters of the Simeon game because Coach Sonny Cox said he was too frustrated and flustered playing in front of a big crowd, so he set him down. On the run, they come again. Brown. Oh, what a Tim Brown changed hands in mid-flight and got it to fall. Is that Paul throwing up a prayer? <laughs> Amen. A heck what? of an athletic move. I'd probably wow. throw my back out and half my, the rest of my muscles if I tried something like that. So Evanston leads it by one, 2019. We're seeing some athletic ability at its best at the Assembly Hall this afternoon. A lot of folks thought King had it all. Not so. Down the lane. Oh, great defensive play or a foul. Great penetration move by a man. 6'8", though. Well, Marcus Liberty with that quick first step we talked about before. Fouls on Brian Brown. There's Liberty driving. Oof. Well, a lot of hands in there. A lot of hands in there. It's tough to make that call, I think. Yeah, that's a prayer. Tim Brown, <laughs> a prayer with a candle lit. <laughs> Robinson got uh, submarined a little bit there. I think he was looking for a call from the official, but again, I think it was a good no call. So at the free throw line, it'll be Marcus Liberty. He does everything well, including foul shot, 78% on the campaign. That's David Weatherall, 24 in for King. He's in for Williams, right? You know, as Weatherall was a starter for half the year when Williams wasn't uh, uh, was ineligible, so uh, bringing him off the bench, I don't think they're going to lose a whole lot. And I think we've just seen the bench for King because that's about it. <laughs> well, he's a very good bench, I'll tell you that. Liberty buries them both. King back up in front by one, and it working against the pressure. Mike Jones. Bossed with great body control, and now a foul from behind on Reginald King, who didn't think so. They were, you know, they were having trouble with the press until Boss got the ball. Then it seems like uh, he can handle it uh, a little bit better than the other guys. I, I think that's got to be a key, keeping him in the game and put the ball in his hands, bringing it up. And Boss is also very efficient at the free throw line, hitting in the high 70s on the year. I don't know how long King's going to keep his press on now. They're a little, uh, uh, they've got the other team in a bonus. The press isn't uh, working that much. Evanston had that ball for a moment and then kicked it outside where Tim Brown tried to hustle and get it, but he stepped on the end line, so King owns the basketball with that one-digit spread. King won't put it up very often. He'll shoot when he's wide open and almost has to bring out the zone. Down low they go. Liberty is fouled. No, they say travel with a basketball. Marcus Liberty traveling on the spin move, and Evanston gets somewhat of a break. He shoveled his feet before uh, before the foul occurred. King has not called off this press the entire game. That's the way to break it right in the middle. Pointer, too hard. If they could have had a better shot, they had a two-on-one break. Running the other way is King. Emmett Lynch all the way down. He gets the ball stripped away, and now we've got a foul or no, just out of bounds. Out of bounds as Evanston stepped on the end line trying to come the other way. Yeah, I think the player who recovered the ball had come from uh, out of bounds. There are some quick hands out here right now. Some quick eyes by the officials. That was a nice ball. Outside they go. Liberty doesn't want the shot. So they'll set up the offense in the form of King. 5.43 remaining in the first half. Chicago King leading it in case you've just joined us by one. Peoria Manuel already a winner. King with a jumper. Yes. Uh, he won't shoot often, but evidently he can shoot. In the Super, he had 11 points, 5 assists, and 3 steals. 
Here's a ball up in the air, knocked away. King coming the other way, and look out now. They'll get it all the way down to Lynch, and that's two. Nice, uh, nice move going underneath the basket and using the rim to uh, protect against the block shot. Boy, Emma Lynch, once he gets one, he wants another right away, and he almost picked up the steal, but Boss too strong for him. Hung on to the basketball, and Lynch picks up the personal. Jim, did you notice the last turnover was caused by somebody else having the ball in his hand, making the pass other, uh, making the pass other than Boss? And uh, I, either the other kids have to react a little bit better, or they have to just keep giving the ball to Boss and let him uh, uh, do the passing. You were talking about Coach Mike Hart being loose for Evanston. He was quoted after the super sectional game as saying, gee, I kind of wanted to play Simeon. You know, they have that great press, and we wanted to see if we could break it, but I guess we'll have to settle for King. Settle for King. Free throw up and good by Boss, and he makes it a four-point affair. That ends the King run. Said it seemed like Evanston was up one, weren't they? And then all of a sudden King was up five. Right. So uh, they got the ability to get points quick. Perfect from the line is bossed on that little trip and now in bounding, almost taking it away. King running the other way. But good transition defense by Evanston after they put on the pressure, they fall back and make King set up the offense. I think that's nice pressure by Evanston on that inbounds pass, though. This is Robinson, and that is beauty. Oh, that's pretty. What a power move. Lavertis Robinson. All state written all over. See what Boston's doing here. He'll dribble and he'll try to get somebody to commit to him other than one man. Jones misses. Brown does it. That's not the shot you want from outside on that, I don't think. Well, fortunately, no one was screening out Brian Brown. And his teammate picked him up. That, a good team does that. 27 24 King up by three. They go to Lynch. He wants one. He won't get it. He gets nothing but air, as a matter of fact, and Brown has the rebound. There are two Browns on the floor, Brian Brown and Tim Brown. I don't think Sonny Cox wants uh, uh, was, uh, Emmett Lynch shooting the ball that much. Nice pass from Brown to Brown. Oh, that was pretty. He threaded it. Tim Brown hitting Brian Brown. He was so aware of the size of King that he could see him arch the ball just a little higher, a little softer, and got all that. Well, we're back to a one-point ball game again. Team with the basketball has the lead. We're under four minutes remaining in the first half. Lynch trying to look inside for Robinson. He's covered up pretty good. King will force it, lose it, picked up by Weatherall. He'll fire. Yep. That's what you call taking out the garbage. Pick up the loose ball and then fire it home. 15. Dangerous cross court pass, but they'll take it all the way down. And it's kicked and out of bounds. So King will be back on defense again. Mistake the the Evanston guards, the other than Bob Boss, are doing against this press is they're letting one man stop them. You know, you're playing against a 2 2 1 zone press like this. What you should do is dribble the ball a little bit and try to get two guys to commit and then hit the open man. Sid Pointer is out now as Sebastian Coleman comes in. Boss has his shot blocked and the ball will come down finally in the hands of Jones who wants it. Oh, yeah. Great defensive play on the, on the block and a nice recovery and, and, and the stick it in by Mike Jones. Was that Liberty who got his hands on the block? This is Robinson all the way down. He kicks it off and it's stolen away. Now it's out of bounds and it belongs to Evanston. Well, King a little bit out of control that time. Robinson trying to whip a pass off on the wing. He did not see Mike Jones coming up from behind. One thing I think King has to do is they have to stay cool. They're a very emotional team, and, I, and they can't let the officials bother them. Jones kicks it off to Brown, who gets it rejected and knocked about into the first row by Marcus Liberty. Back of a block. This should be a pretty thing to watch. Don't look like he might have traveled first. It's not pretty if you're Brian Brown, though. No, no, that's what you're cheering for, I guess. Evanston will have the ball with a chance to take the lead when we come back. Time out on the floor. King leads at 29-28. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. With the arrival of the Morrison's new baby, the flexibility of Country Companies Universal Life Insurance is a big help. I know it's hard to believe, but you can change the amount of your coverage, even skip payments if you need to. But why country companies? They've always delivered what they promised. You've got the country behind you. With country companies, universal life. You've got the country companies. 
independently owned IPS Auto Parts store is happy to help bring you this championship tournament. We would like to take this opportunity to remind you that name brand auto parts will not cost you any more than generic brands. Your IPS store features top quality name brands such as Federal Mogul Engine Bearings, preferred by engine rebuilders, Felpro Gaskets, where sealing is a science, and Auto Line Water Pumps, named Remanufacturer of the Year. Visit the IPS store nearest you wherever you see this shield. Back live at Assembly Hall where King leads it by one and Frank Bassoni, it's no secret that a lot of folks thought King would come out here and put Evanston away in a hurry. That has not been the case at all. Not at all and Mike Hart was just telling his team in this huddle here, remember the ball fake. His team, his team will jump at the ball so watch and see if Evanston goes the ball fake here. They run the stack off the free throw line and then kick it out to the side. Jones doesn't want the shot and they'll reload the offense. Evanston has shown as great as leaping ability as King has this game. If this game goes on, I think if it can stay close, uh, it gives Evanston, I think, more and more confidence. Boss just working it around the outside. See, they're being very patient. This is good. They're just oh, waiting Jones for the opportunity. Jones forces it and kisses the glass. They're just waiting for an opportunity, an opening, and uh, he got a nice little shot, and he used the glass well. That was the right thing to do on that shot. He sliced down the right side of the lane, and now Evanston leads at 30-29, and King will wait for everybody to get in tow. King having a lot of trouble out front against Jones. Down low, they go. Beautiful pass, but they can't get it to fall as Wetterall misses the layup. Running the other way is Jones. Will he take it? No, he almost lost it. And now he does because he was called for traveling. He was going one on two that time, and not always a good move unless you can get it to fall. Well, uh, the coach I was talking about a con controlled break. That was not a controlled break. I don't think that's what he wants. Marcus Liberty has whatever he wants to do with it. And it's too hard. Rebound comes down to Evanson. I thought he should have used the glass on that. He could have got a better angle on the shot. Tim Brown with a strong rebound. All the way down it goes. Inside Brown. Glass again. Nice pass. Brian Brown got it to fall. And Evanston leads it by three. Their biggest lead of this contest. A mistake King is making, I think, is their hands are down. You know, we made a big deal about their hands being out could cover but those hands are down by their size they could might as well be five foot tall if that's where their hands are going to be kevin williams getting set to check back into the ball game for coach sonny cox robinson uh-huh yeah it, he gets the ball there and he's going to score yeah, lights out there i don't think the intensity uh, that, that king has shown so far is what they can show no now the ball is loose as it gets out of the hands of brown but they recover it and boss will set it back out front to mike jones that's a great observation. The intensity level is not there yet. I don't know, maybe they've been reading the paper or whatever, I don't know, but hey, they're in a the ball game. They're losing by one, there's a minute to go here, and Evanston looks like they're going for a last shot. And yeah, we'll see if they can hang on for an entire minute or whether or not they're just looking for the high percentage. Boss, nothing there, bad pass, almost knocked out of bounds. It is now by Lavertus Robinson. And checking back in is Williams. Coming out will be David Weatherall for King. Oh, here's a score from the NCAA tournament that'll make Hoosier fans close the shades. Cleveland State leading Indiana 51-41 in the second half. Cleveland State by 10. Here it is. Oh, taken away by King, but he couldn't control it. The ball goes out of bounds. King had it for a moment and looked like he'd be racing down that sideline for the glass, but couldn't control it as Jones contested the steal. So inbounding will be Sebastian Coleman. He's a senior, doesn't put all oh, bad. That was not a bad pass, but the ball just got away in a hurry. Lynch, he tries to catch up with it. He's too far under the basket, and now a foul on Liberty, or do they just say out of bounds? Liberty stepped out of bounds. Okay. I'm not sure what happened. It looked like he was going to call a foul on Liberty at first, and now they've just awarded the ball out of bounds on the side. I thought that was a good lead pass on the, on the fast break. You know, let the man run underneath it. I think he just got himself caught up too far underneath the basket. Sid Pointer in a hurry to get back into the ball game, which he does, and now coming out will be Sebastian Coleman. Pointer electrified this crowd earlier in the first half with a rebound slam. I'll tell you, Evanston, I don't know what they've done against pressure all year long, full court pressure, but they have obviously worked at it and worked at it because they do it well. 15 seconds remaining. Bossed with the basketball. Out to Jones. 
12 seconds and 10. Evanston leading by one. It looks like they'll go into the locker room with the lead. Jones on the way down. We've got a whistle and a foul. It'll be against. Good call. Against the Williams. It's against King. Let's see who. Kevin Williams. Maybe we can see. Uh, I thought it was a good call. Yeah, he's not playing it. Yeah, he didn't get his whole body in front of him. With six seconds remaining, then Jones will go to the free throw line. That's a second personal foul on Kevin Williams in this basketball game. Yeah, you guys are right. The intensity level is not balanced here. I suspect it will be in the second half after Sonny Cox has a few words. Oh, rather be lucky than good. Perfect free throw. Yeah. <laughs> Called one for one. I would say that's something uh, Coach Cox is going to talk to him about at half. They've got to come out and, uh, hey, they're in a ball game. Now. And, uh, I, of course, I think the score will do that for Coach. Jones got the friendly bounce, and this time he doesn't need one. As he rattles it in, gets two. Evanston leads it by three with six seconds remaining. King in a big hurry, almost throws it away. Liberty stops, 20-footer. No. There's still time left. And everybody was kind of standing around. Six seconds is an awful long time. Well, Williams and Robinson kind of looked at each other as if to say you or me, and then by that time, the two seconds had elapsed. So we are at intermission at Assembly Hall in the second game of the quarterfinals. Peoria Manuel has advanced over Rockford Boylan, and now through 16 minutes of play, it is Evanston raising a few eyebrows at the hall by leading King 34-31. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. Presenting five incredible things you can do with a new John Deere lawn tractor. You can cut grass more evenly with our new mowing deck. You can get rid of rainwater with our new tip seat. And ride more quietly because we've enclosed the engine. You can even carry heavier loads because we've added more horsepower. But the most incredible thing you can do with a new John Deere tractor is take one home. Because we've lowered the price. Isn't that incredible? Beauty is a beautiful career, and Flamingo Beauty College is a way to shape your professional life with new classes starting every week. Our professional staff teaches you all of the basics and the newest beauty and styling techniques to help you achieve your personal goals. Find out more about our exciting program. Call Flamingo Beauty College today, 676-7823. We have it all. Come and learn with the winners. Flamingo Beauty College. Time and with me is one of the finest basketball coaches working anywhere is Bob Hambrick of Chicago Simeon. Coach, welcome and congratulations on another great year. Thank you very much. What do you think about the, the uh, let's, before we talk about this particular game, let's talk about your team and your season because you only lost one game, had another brilliant year. I know that it takes more than just good players to win basketball games. What about Bob Hambrick's philosophy of coaching? Can you help us with that a little bit? Well, I just try to get some young men that want to work hard, that want to dedicate themselves to playing basketball and making their grades, and not necessarily in that order. And then we just try to put some things together and work hard at it. That's all. Bob Hambrick is also well known for uh, being interested in the young men he coaches on the court, off the floor, too. That's very important in your career, isn't it? Well, really, that's about the main, main reason why I'm still in education and in coaching. I've had several opportunities to go into private industry that I've turned down. young guys in the school as as possible. Well, and you've had a great deal of success at that, of course. Talk now about Chicago King playing against Evanston. How have they played any differently here than they did in the championship game in the Public League in Chicago? Well, I think that King is not utilizing their big people as well. And with Evanston playing a semi-man-to-man -man defense has made King change some things. And they're not doing, having any kind of movement around the basket. They're not helping each other out. There's no screens being set or any picks or anything like that. And that's the major reason why King has not pulled away. Has Marcus Liberty been, during the course of this season, uh, sort of an outside player for a guy of his size? Most of the time, he's a real uh, good outside shooter. And he handles the ball well, so he has done a lot of the outside work whenever the pressure has been put on him. But in the last few weeks, uh, uh, King has come on so well. The little guard, Reggie King, has come on so well. And Marcus is going back down underneath the boards, but today they're not doing that. What do you think King is going to change in the second half to try to get back into the lead? I think they're going to apply a little bit more pressure on their press. And I think that they're going to go to Lavertis Robinson and Marcus as often as possible. All right.
right. Did you get a chance to see uh, the first game? And if so, what was your reaction to Peoria Emanuel? Well, I had, I'd had a couple of those kids at camp this past summer, so I wasn't surprised at all. I knew they were a good ball club. Uh, they are well coached, and they have some fine talent on that team. So I wasn't surprised at all the outcome. What about the bottom bracket now? Who do you like tonight in the two games? Uh, St. Joseph's, most definitely. And the other game is... Uh, Central and uh, Carbondale. And I have to take Rich Central. Okay, Rich Central and, and uh, St. Joseph's tonight. What about this one yet? Three-point lead for Evanston at halftime. Do you think King will come back and get them? Well, you know, being from Chicago, I have to say King. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of the great coaches in our state and our good friend Bob Hamburg of Chicago Simeon. We'll come back for the second half in a moment. One of your network sponsors is Brew. What's this in the blue and yellow bag? It's Brute, the brand to switch to. A corn soil insecticide that fits the recommended practice of chemical rotation. Only Brute Trimethocarb Insecticide is formulated by a unique process that blends active ingredients throughout each granule. So Brute enters the soil gradually to protect your corn all through the rootworm season. For stopping power and staying power, switch to Brute. It stops rootworms. Biggs Awning and Window Company has everything you need to beautify and protect your home or office building. And now save 20 to 40% during Biggs Annual Spring Sale. Save on custom-designed steel-insulated entry doors, the energy-efficient twin sliding door and window system, iron-secure doors with a four-way deadbolt locking system that stays locked, colorful Venetian blinds and tilting thermal replacement windows, plus other great buys throughout the store. It's all at Biggs Awning and Window Company, where quality is first, last, and always. Jamal Brack, Dan, Bill Geist, the coach at Lyle Bennett, back at halftime where Evanston leads this contest 34-31. Let's take a look at some of the individual scoring and how it got done. 34-31, we'll take a look at King first. The All-Stater Robinson with 11 points. No foul trouble there either all along the way down the board. Liberty with only six, and that's kind of unusual considering how many points he scores, 26 in average. Yeah, but they've gotten uh, points from other people that they normally don't do. I think the, the key here is defense. I mean, uh, they've scored enough points. They just haven't played defense hard enough. Emmett Lynch has six, averaging eight on the year. Williams with four. That's Kev Kevin Williams with four points and two fouls. King with one bucket and one foul and Weatherall got in and scored two points in the contest. The Wild Kits right now. Brown, that is Brian Brown, with 12 points. And he has been the big gun. He's averaging only 10 points on the campaign, but today he's been hot and bossed. You like the way he's handled the ball, oh, yeah. and plus he scored eight points. Yeah, he's doing a lot more than the points. Pointer with six points, and Sid Pointer, of course, electrified this crowd in case you missed it with, a, with an offensive rebound slam that they're still buzzing about here. And there you saw the rest of the scoring as well. We'll come back and take a look at the team statistics. One of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Milk, milk, got the kick that gives you more. How kick? More nutrition in every pore. How kick? I'm moving to the rhythm of a brand new day. Cause the vitamins and milk help me on my way. Kick! So get all the health kick, let it pour. America's favorite health kick. Get all the health kick, milk's got more. Have more milk, cause milk's got more. It's John Beers Ford Subaru's once a year fleet buyer sale. Once a year only, we sell every car and truck and van at a factory direct fleet buyer's price or below. There's over 100 used cars and trucks from only $99. Everything is discounted. Because we've purchased every new car truck Ford had for this one big sale, we can sell them to you for less. There's over 300 cars and trucks priced at or below what the big fleet buyers pay. Remember, it's only once a year, and it's now at John Beers Ford Subaru. Mm -hmm. Yes, you look cuter than cute. You look adorable. Did you just come from the big sale at the baby corner in Peoria? <laughs> Every baby I talk to is babbling on and on about baby corner's big sale. Clothing from newborn to four toddler. Cribs, chests, and dressing tables. High chairs, strollers, and car seats. All kinds of nursery items and baby accessories now on sale at the baby corner. North University, Peoria. 
will play Peoria Emanuel in tomorrow's first semifinal game here at the Assembly Hall. Right now, Evanston looks like they wanted more. They lead King 34-31. Taking a look at the team stats for Evanston, good field goal percentage, 14 to 24, 58%. Exactly the same for King, 14 of 24 for 58%. You can't beat that. No. You look at the stats, they're all even. I, I guess that means we got a pretty even game, huh? Yeah, the edge is, of course, at the free throw line because Evanston has been there three more times than has King, and they have made three more free throws, which is basically the difference in this ball game. 86% from the stripe for Evanston, 75 for Chicago King. Rebounding fairly even, too, although it surprises a lot of folks that Evanston has the upper hand, 11-9, and turnovers almost even again. King with one more. I, I think that's not good that Evanston's leading a rebounding, if you're a, a King fan. Why do you think that is? Simply well, because of position, simply because of the attitude? King we is, I think King's got to dominate the boards. I mean, they've got to do a better job on the boards than they're doing. And, uh, and I think the key there also is defense. You know, we talked about their intensity level. I just don't think it's there yet, and I think they've got to get it in gear. We'll come back and see if the Wild Kids keep it up or if King comes back. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. Hey, yo, buddy! My mower broke down. Mind if I borrow yours? Sure. <laughs> Old buddy. Why is it that the grass is always greener wherever there's a John Deere lawnmower? Oh, you worried around, so I help myself. Because you can always depend on a John Deere lawnmower to keep running when others don't. It's got adjustable speed drive, a blade brake clutch, and a two or four cycle engine. Hi. Don't tell me. Your lawnmower's not working. I don't even own one. Nothing runs like a deer. Republicans are impressed with Bob Madigan. Take this seatbelt law. Bob is against it. The liberals won't force school consolidation on Bob Madigan. Bob Madigan has the courage to say no. Bob Madigan will stand up to the welfare lobby. Bob Madigan is the conservative candidate. Bob Madigan, common sense, character, and the courage to say no. Jim Albrecht, Frank Pisoni, and Bill Geist hoping you're enjoying this second game in the quarterfinals of the Illinois Class 2A Boys Basketball Tournament. Well, I was just going to say, I think uh, anybody who heard Coach Hamburg at halftime uh, speak, I think it was a great uh, analysis of what happened. Did you notice how many times, well, King didn't do that during the year, or King did this during the year. They're not doing it tonight and, uh, or this afternoon. And I think that's the key. We're, we're not seeing the King that played all year. We're seeing somebody else, at least in the first half. And I think the key is for them to get into their normal game. The same 10 men who started the game come out after the intermission on the floor. This is Emmett Lynch over to Reginald King up in the air and short. Rebound belongs to Brown. Tim Brown gets up high to bring it down. Mike Jones with a basketball taken away from behind. King kicks it up to Lynch. Will he win the race? Yes, he will. A mistake by the dribbler. You, can, you should tr not try to dribble through two people like that. Well, not when they've got quick hands. 34-33. Evanston's lead cut to one now. Still have the same 2-3 zone. Brown walked with the basketball. He had the right idea, though. He had him on, uh, up in the air. He, he made a good fake. He just uh, shuffled his feet. When I say good fake, it was a good head fake and, and a shot fake. And that's a tough call to make, too, for a lot of officials. Well, know? it is because, you know, like I was watching his head and the ball, and it looked good. You know, the officials are watching the feet, but, of course, they're trained to do that. King with a chance to come down and take the lead. Spinning turnaround Williams, and King is up in front as Kevin Williams buries one on the baseline. Now, when we, when we played him at, at Christmas, that's what I still see that play in my sleep. <laughs> Lobbing the ball up for that little turnaround jumper, and the other two big men just uh, hitting the boards, and they're looking for the miss. So Evanston with two straight turnovers, which were converted into four points by King, now trails by one. Boss will force it and hit. Nice penetration move. You know, it seems like every time they need something, uh, their team leader comes uh, comes to the, the forefront. That is Bob Boss. All the way down comes Robinson, and he'll wait for some help. The hurt is Robinson. Good defensive pressure. Trouble. Yeah. Good defensive pressure. Evanston works hard on D. They're not, they're not giving in at all. Mike Jones using every extremity he owns to try to knock that <laughs> ball away. There you see Sonny Cox. Landon is his given name. They call him Sonny around Martin Luther King High School. This is a sagging man-to-man -man defense that we're looking at from Evanston. And that's two by Lavertus Robinson. They didn't sag enough at the time, though, did they? 
See, he gets the ball at that low post. He's so strong and he can jump so well. It's a great power move. It's, I, I can't see how you can stop it. You got to stop him from getting the ball. King leads by one. Brown with the basketball. High post, 14-footer. Nothing but net. And it'll go. And he is fouled on the play. He is fouled by Kevin Williams. And I believe that's his third of the contest. Not a good foul by Kevin Williams because the ball was released and he hit him a little bit late. Maybe we can see this with the replay here. Well, the camera didn't get up high enough. It didn't seem like <laughs> Yeah, he got him on the right arm as he flew by. And Brown, who had 12 points in the first half, now will try for his 15th. He wants that basketball from the ref. Please. I want it down. Isn't Tim Brown their, their big scorer? Yeah, Tim Brown is the man who uh, leads the team. He has a 14-point average. but and He's got two, right? Right. He's been silent offensively. A three-point play. Puts Evanston back in front in what has turned out to be a dandy of a basketball game from Assembly Hall. The Wild Kits, 39. King, 37. This is Mr. King with the basketball. Working against Jones. Marcus Liberty did not even look at the basket that time. Inside Robinson, you know where that's going. Right there. What an athletic move. He had a hand on his, a hand on the basketball, a hand on his arm, and he still got it down. 15 points now for Robinson. He's going to shoot the ball, fake a shot or whatever. Watch this. And double clutch it. Boom. Oh, boy. He just hung in the air and did that. That's athletic ability. I wonder when Newton defined the law of gravity, I wonder if he took into account somebody like Robinson. Got to come down eventually. Three-point play is not. He'll have to settle for two as the free throw comes out. And we're tied at 39. Great thoroughbreds in this game, both sides. Jones and Bost playing catch out front. 5.40 remaining in the third quarter. Along the baseline, Brown. Brown has trouble with the basketball and finally kicks it back out front to Jones. Pointer, way short. Hey, I think he had somebody in his face that time. Might have got a piece of the basketball. As Sid Pointer came up with nothing but air. And King can take the lead. Evanson's got to stay patient on offense. You know, they, they can't start rushing things. They got to wait for that defensive mistake. Liberty. Give me Liberty. Marcus Liberty. 41-39 King. We're talking silk here. Well, I, I, if I was Coach Cox, I just want him to look at the hoop a little bit more. I, it's kind of an unusual thing to say about Marcus Liberty, too, because I don't think he's ever been, had to been a, uh, or been encouraged to shoot the ball. That was Tim Brown from the right wing trying to warm up. Brown had 28 points against Carmel in the super sectional game and scored 12 points in a row in the fourth quarter to bring his team down to Champaign, but he is not had that many opportunities today. I think that shot might have made uh, Coach Hart's uh, uh, heart to start uh, pumping a little bit faster because I think that's what he wants. He wants to start to get into the game a little bit more offensively. Tim Brown also gets 13.6 rebounds a game, which is an awesome stat. Liberty tried to go inside to Robinson, which did not turn out to be a good idea. Three on one, Evanston behind the back. Brown hit. They like that behind the back pass, don't they? Hello. Brian Brown with a pretty pass after the pretty pass gets two, and King now coming the other way, and that's not a foul that Coach Hart wants to see as Sid Pointer simply just reached in. His man was blowing by, and there was no way he was going to get the basketball. See, the trouble sometimes is he gets to, your team gets on a little bit of a roll. They get a, they get a fast break, and, and, and then they get a little too anxious on the press and reach rather than move his feet. Here's a nice, nice save. That's a great play. I think they caught the King players a little uh, flat-footed. There you see the behind-the-back pass from Jones, which went right to Brown. And that's why we're Evanston in front by two. Nice quick defensive move that time Marcus, by Tim Brown. Marcus Liberty tried to take Brown downtown on the baseline, but that didn't work out. There you see the coach of the Evanston Wild Kits in his second year. It seems like uh, Tim Brown's been told that Liberty likes to drive that uh, baseline, and he's doing a nice job taking it away from him. Four minutes, five seconds remaining in the third quarter. King trailing by a bucket. In the middle they go. Liberty, oh, what a pretty move. Now, how can I, dude, you know, if I was That's King, Robinson, excuse me, yeah. Robinson. Uh, Liberty made the pass.